complex shapes. Again, sometimes you have to get an unorganic shape to get an organic shape. If I wanted arms on this character, what I would have to do is build maybe a cylinder first in order to get that shape down. Now, one thing I want to point out before we get too much further into the character is the fact that if I have 20 individuals in my classroom or so, I don't want everybody to build an impy type character with pointy head ears, okay? The point of this exercise is to become aware of shape and stitch shape together. What your character looks like is going to be different from mine. In fact, it's a requirement that your character look a little bit different than mine. What I want to kind of concentrate on is a little bit of anatomy, not too much. Um, I want you to grow outside the idea that everything has to be so anatomically perfect. But I do want appealing, okay? And what I mean by that is, you know, if I have shoulders on a character, that's appealing. If I have a character with no shoulders, he looks like, oh, kind of a, a weird, cartoony shaped person, okay? So you can see that, like, Pixar people or Pixar cartoons, they're very cartoony and they don't have any kind of shape to them. Uh, their head is always like roundish or guitar pickish. Um, but really, they don't have any kind of overall raw shape transfer from one form to the next. Okay, So we want to stay away from those type of cartoony characters and concept later on, you know, very elaborate characters. Okay, And this is modeling one, so we'll never get to that point, but we're going to concentrate on low res, boxy type characters. Okay, So that being said, let's make a complex part. First off, make sure you go back to object mode for every part. Okay. In this case, go to edit mode, go to face, click on face. Now again, you know, I'm just using hotkeys here. Control, and we'll be using the extrude region and edge loop cut slide. It's important to note that it is very important, I don't care who tells you what, to learn where buttons are in the interface. Not everything is a hotkey, okay? If you know where things are in multiple locations, you'll be a stronger modeler for it. Hotkeys are nice, but in your learning path, you should know where everything is in the interface along with the hotkey. In my opinion, hotkeys are third on the menu. Okay, That's when you start getting faster at things. That's when hotkeys become useful. So, control, E, right click, control, E, right click, control, R. Control R. Okay, that was pretty easy to produce based on hotkeys. Now, if I just said that week one, I don't think you would have been ready for just hotkeys in general. Pretend I'm producing this series for uh, a person that's never touched a 3D model in their life. All right, now let's go back to object mode and let's apply a modifier called multi resolution. subdivide and let's just kind of move this into place and we'll tilt it at one angle so usually what I do here is go one on the keyboard first and let's scale this down just a little bit we'll scale it uniformly based upon the center and then I'll rotate it yeah let's go seven or I can move this back W on the keyboard Again, that's right here. A 
a little bit more scaling. Now, here's the issue. How do I scale it this way? Well, I think in one of the videos I already stated how to do this. It is based upon local transform. So now I can grow this out. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit this way. There we go. And then I'm going to produce this shape again. Shift D to duplicate it. Move it forward. Rotate it a little bit this way. Forward. All right, you're starting to become a character modeler, and that's crazy, okay? Now, after you get every just little shape in place, you can then add your own personal tweaks via Sculpt. Just remember, keep everything very low res and near the resolution of the next part. So these are all pretty close to the same resolution. Here, I can go back to sculpt mode and I could start thinking about, well, these shapes are too cylindrical shaped like. I need to have some change in them. Just basic change though, nothing to write home about. Like maybe just that much right there. Again, we're not going to get really into anatomy with this. We're just thinking about how that shape really looks in real life or how you think it should look on your character. The real challenge here is going to be the hand. Again, you should just think of them as small cylinders and build it really big. Once I get like this whole arm built, I can go back to object mode and start seeing what that's going to look like on the other side. Here's how you separate parts. Again, if these two are joined together, I can simply go into edit mode highlight one vertex, hit L on the keyboard, go mesh, vertices, separate. Oops, mesh, vertices, separate. Then choose selection. Go back to object mode and delete that out. Then I can play around with the idea of maybe I want to see what this part looks like over on the other side. Again, if I grab all three of them, I can go object, join. Notice what happened here, however, the resolution of the, the top part changed. Control Z. It's based upon these having modifiers. You should always apply them so they don't affect any other part. Let's now try that again. Highlight all three parts, holding shift, go object, join, one on the keyboard, move the 3D cursor here, object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. I would use global, And let's see if this mirrors over correctly. Object, mirror, X global. 
Oh, it didn't. And I'll show you why in the next video.